Hi, Big Paris. I'm Emma Corrin. I'm speaking to you from London, and I play Princess Diana in the new season of The Crown. I didn't really know how I was going to play her. A lot changed when I got the scripts because Peter's writing is just incredible and, you know, this is a fictional world that he's created. It clicked for me that, oh, I'm playing a character, you know, it's Diana on the page, it's Peter's Diana. I'm, this is my portrayal. And I suppose with that, gave it, it came some freedom to bring what I wanted to the part. Yeah, I just said, all right. I don't know, it's just there's something that, something about how, how she said, all right, that kind of always got me into it, I don't know. She always did this thing where she went down at the end of everything she said. Her intonation sort of like this. Oh, I'll be fine. Locked up in the palace on my own. I just imagined it as a straight line and then falling off a cliff. It's like, straight line, down. It's actually an amazing documentary called In Her Own Words, and it's on Netflix. And that's actually the only documentary I watched for the role. It's um, from these tapes that she recorded for a book that Andrew Morton wrote on her. But then the tapes, I think, were released after she died. And it's just her talking about her life. And it's incredible. And it, it's honestly, like, I couldn't really, after I'd watched that, I don't think I was like, there's nothing else I really need and for, for getting her voice down, yeah. And then I worked with um, William Conacher, who's a brilliant dialect coach. You know, you can hear someone's voice and try and do an impression of it, but everything we do on The Crown is, we're not doing impressions, this isn't mimicry. So with William, it was sort of understanding why she talked the way she did and learning how to sustain it in conversation and how to really make it my own, yeah. I'm notoriously not a good dancer. I remember once one of my sixth form teachers saying I danced like a spider. That's kind of haunted me ever since. But I really enjoyed dancing in the series. I had a lot of training, which helped. Well, in a lot of the longer dance scenes, actually, it was kind of just unchoreographed. I just spun around and let go and really enjoyed it. I love dancing if it's not choreographed, because then there are no rules and you just do what you want. And I don't really care. So it was really fun to like let go with her in that way. And it's kind of where I found a lot of the essence of her, I think, in those scenes where she completely lets go. Because it just showed that she carries so much inside of her that she has no way of expressing unless she's in a room on her own with music. Quite a beautiful thing, I think. Definitely. I always describe it as kind of like the zipping up of a character. So you have all this like research and you have all this coaching with movement and voice and it's all floating around like this and you're aware of it all. And then when you're like put in your costume, it kind of seals it all up and suddenly you're, you feel like it kind of brings it together. Oh, Amy Roberts and Sid Roberts who do the um, costumes are just incredible and we got on so well. A lot of the costumes are vintage stuff, which is really cool. It was interesting seeing what things they tried to replicate completely and things they tried to do. I feel like everything actually ended up being our version of it. I mean, even the wedding dress isn't a replication. It's our version of it and similarly with a lot of the dresses like some of the ones in the Australia tour very similar in color tone but actually the pattern is different and I really like that because again it's you know you can you can compare but you, but there is a bit of contrast there well, you know that's interesting because it would again be specific to era so it's like obviously young Diana where she's in like yellow dungarees and sweater vests and for that period of her life I think it was like the sweater vests itchy sweater vests and um well a bit like what I'm wearing now and a shirt and then like a, and a long kind of skirt and you really I felt like frumpy but in like a quite a childish way that was really useful and then when she was in Australia and she's wearing these incredible dresses I felt like I was in a kind of work uniform and then it was really interesting coming to the later episodes when she's in New York and you feel like oh something's changed this is her this is her voice like she's chosen this she knows what she's doing I remember there's a outfit that I wear in maybe episode nine when they're bringing the body of Hugh Lindsay out of the plane and I'm waiting on the tarmac with Charles it's quite a sad scene but I'm wearing this like black bomber jacket from it was vintage Yves Saint Laurent and it was one of the things I was so insistent I was going to steal but didn't manage to Um, but I think I'd probably say that it's her portrayal so she should not listen to anyone but her own intuition on you know from the scripts and what she gets I would be worried I guess trying to bring what the person before brought to it I've heard a lot of people like Helena and um, Olivia say that and I think that a part of it is absorbing what that uh, previous person's done but a lot of it's kind of like doing your own thing and bringing your own thing to it I think that's the great thing about the crown changing cast every two seasons means that it's you see a different actor's portrayal of this person
would, yeah, I can't promise I'll know them. My sister's cleaning lady? A kindergarten teacher. Okay, yeah. The Emmanuels. And the train was, oh my God, I have no idea. 21 something? 25 feet, okay. I was gonna say 21 feet, and I was like, that seems ludicrously long. But it was, wasn't it? John Travolta. Oh my god, I don't know. What mistake did she make? Love that. That's fantastic. I didn't know that. Brilliant. You can watch season four of The Crown on the 15th of November on Netflix. Bye.